Thank you for tuning in to the Bethel Temple Faith Church broadcast. We appreciate your viewership and are confident that there's a word from the Lord for you. Now with today's message, our pastor and founder, Pastor Bertram Hinton Jr. All I have in terms of announcements, and we'll make a reiteration on Wednesday. If you have any questions relative to ushering, you can contact Deacon Wells. Any questions about the setup, Deacon Foster, praise team, y'all know y'all contact, and uh, everything else will be fine. Amen. Just want to um, thank God for the baptism on Wednesday night. Right. Amen. What a remarkable thing that was. Amen. 19 people, amen, being baptized in the house. Amen. That was just, I mean, it was historic. And we thank God for it. It was just a wonderful time. And God really blessed us. In terms of our membership, I said on last Sunday, I was supposed to open the church up for membership. Uh, time got away from me, so I'm not going to let time get away from me today. If you're here and you say, I want to be a member of Bethel Temple Faith Church, would you just come at this time so that we can welcome you officially into the church of Bethel Temple Faith Church family. Thank God for these, look at these wonderful people that are still coming. Amen. We give that praise to Brother Arnold and Will, and Sister Kingston Children. I see Sister Tiana Evans coming. All kind of stuff is happening. I see just the Sadie Greer coming down. Oh God, it's happening all the time. And we give God praise, glory, and honor. Amen. We welcome these newest. Oh, I see somebody else coming around the corner. Brother Chris Elliott jumping out. My God from Zion. I thank you, Lord. Brother Chris Elliott, Sister Keaston Chilford, right. Sister Sadie Greer, Sadie. Brother Ernie Wells, and Sister Tiana Evans. Let's kick the welcome song, and I want y'all to come. Just do it quickly. Come shake their hand, amen, and welcome into the house of God as the, the welcome song is playing. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, if you're standing in front of me and you have not seen First Lady to get your information sheet, please do so after church. Hallelujah to Jesus. God is always adding to the kingdom. Did you get some shots? And they went to the picture. Okay. Oh my God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. You recorded, amen. Okay. Can you get one shot of your way you can get a picture real quick? Yeah, I'm, just, gonna, have, I'm gonna have to stop it. Just hold on, right? Okay, quick. we'll hold on. Seven numbers. <laughs> it's real out here, folks. It's happening for his glory. For his glory. So, amen. So, we thank God for that. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted on all of us. We do have a business meeting that's coming up. Second, second Wednesday night in, in August where we'll go over some of the financials of the church and we'll talk about the official roster and things like that. So uh, we've already exceeded my expectation. I'm going to just let y'all know all I was looking to have was 40 members before the end of 2017. In less than two years, starting with three families. Minus 30 families for this year. 
Amen. Let's, let's get into the word. Amen. Thank you so much for obliging me that time. Uh, I will not belittle the text today, uh, but I will attempt to expedite it in the sake of the entrance of time. If you have a Bible, you please grab that for me this, at this time. There are four verses of scripture that we would like to take note of out of Joshua chapter number two. Joshua chapter number two, I'll be reading verses 18 through 21 of Joshua chapter two. Uh, for your informational purposes, because I don't know how much uh, of the history I'll be able to share. Uh, please, in your leisure, before Wednesday, if you could, uh, just read the entire chapter of Joshua 2 and Joshua 6. Uh, they will both be germane to the text today, uh, but I may not have the opportunity to dig it out to its fullest uh, in the time that we have allotted, but Joshua 2, verses 18 through 21, I'm trying to do this in 20 minutes today, so God will be glorified. If you have that, would you say amen? amen. Joshua chapter 2, verse 18 reads, Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand come upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit or free of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. 21 is where I'll stop. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. With the help of the Lord today, I'm going to attempt to preach from the thought, the importance of staying in line. The importance of staying in line. Let's pray. God, we thank you for what your word shall speak to us today. I pray now for the power and the tenacity necessary to preach effectively the kingdom of God on today. Satan, the Lord already rebukes you. You have no authority here. And God, we yield it totally to your power on today. I pour now on the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher, who is the reminder of all things whatsoever Jesus has said, to bring back to my mind every thought, every scripture, every word, every illustration necessary to bring across this point today. We thank you, Lord, that you've already anointed your word and your servant to do your will. So, God, all the glory belongs to you for what you shall speak today. For we receive in advance your instruction in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The importance of staying in line. When uh, I was identifying and trying to pray about what exactly it was that God would have me share on today, my mind was racing through quite a few scriptures, and uh, somehow I was able, Deacon Bontnick, to park at uh, Joshua chapter 6. And when I got to Joshua chapter 6, I said, okay, God, I, I understand the end of the story, um, but I, I don't really since that's where you need me to be on Sunday. And he says, son, I need you to share with the people of God on Sunday that this literally is a season and a time that I am allowing them to absolutely conquer and to obtain territory for my glory. He says, I'm actually giving them the ability to be victorious over some stuff that had been victorious over them in the past. I'm allowing them in this season of life to gain uh, not only some traction, but to gain some tangible results out of their lives. And I said, well, Lord, okay, that's, that's, that's good, but, but help me understand where you're trying to go. He said, son, I need you to catch this. He, he told me this. He said, I need you to make sure that people understand that in order for them to gain the victory that I'm giving them, it is mandated that they understand the significance of being in line. 
I said, all right, Lord, do you want me to preach on order? You know, do you want me to preach on uh, submission, authority? You know, what do you want me to preach? He says, no, I want you to preach on being in line. And I said, all right, uh, Brother Lipscomb, I'm having a back and forth with God at this time. And I'm like, well, God, when I hear in line, you know, I'm thinking, Mama, that some folk might be out of order and just need to get, you know, realigned. He says, no, I need you to look at what I'm saying. And I said, okay, Lord, uh, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it, Sister Tiana, because I got Sister Tiana get ready to join the church. I got to make sure she catch at least the first sermon that she get as a member. And so God had me look at the word. And First Lady, he had me begin to define what the word line really means. So I'm trying to do a little teaching here before the preacher shows up, Sister Evans. Uh, the word line, just an English definition, uh, it simply means a chord, C-O-R-D, a chord. It's rope. It's also a border or a boundary. A line is known as a place of support and of protection. A line, a cord, a rope, a boundary, a border, a place of support and of protection. And uh, even though I'm not necessarily old, Mr. Black, uh, I got some old school and a little age on me. Yes, sir. And I began to think about the importance and the significance of a clothesline. And uh, I ain't talking since lips go from what people told me. I'm talking about what I experienced. Um, even though, you know, uh, my mom, my dad, you know, they purchased a house in 1982. Um, in 82, they were creating and inventing things called drying machines. Uh, but while it is kind of a uh, second nature for us today, to have a drying machine. It really wasn't second nature for everyone to own a drying machine in 1982. And one of the ways my mom could dry clothes was by hanging them on a line in the backyard. Our backyard had two stakes, uh, it was a white, two white posts, so to speak. Uh, they looked like capital T's. And they had these lines that were connected and you would put a clothespin on the line to connect whatever item you were trying to dry to hang on the line. Now, the line was supposed to really be there uh, simply to support whatever was trying to be changed. The line was there for to give support to whatever item was trying to get a new form. And I began to think about a line from that standpoint that God is saying that the blessing, check this out, Sister Shaw, that's coming to our lives are going to be aligned and put in place when we understand what support looks like. I don't know if anybody's catching this prematurely. Um, support, Sister Greer, does not mean that somebody, help me today, Jesus, is giving me financial assistance to pay a bill. But it means that somebody cares enough about the unseen parts of me to be willing to stand in the gap for me to make my life change even when the line gets no credit. Okay. Um, I began to think about football. Football season coming up. Uh, and, uh, you know, Mama, I, I'm a football fan. You know, I enjoy watching the Steelers. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I enjoy watching the Steelers. Amen. And one of the things, Rochelle, that I've noticed is that they really, over the last couple of years, have been working on one particular element of the team, and it's called the offensive line. And the offensive line had Rochelle play offensive line in college, so y'all need to know or fact check me here. Here, let you know I'm not telling you a lie. Uh, the offensive line, brother students, had one responsibility. Yeah. That's to keep the quarterback clean. Yeah. Their responsibility is to provide a hole for the running back to run and to keep the quarterback upright. The reality is, and Rochelle will tell you, that when the offensive line plays great, the quarterback gets all the glory. When the quarterback plays bad, the offensive line gets all the blame. When I'm a part of a line, it means that I'm willing to play my role to help somebody else get the credit 
and then to bear the shame if they fall. Help me today, Jesus. The line, Sister Kanisha means that I'm willing to go before somebody to pave a way for them that whoever's coming behind me can get the credit for the work that I'm doing. Every parent in here should have really gave God a high five right there because the reality is there are things you're going through today as a parent to try to make life better for Junior coming behind you. And the reality is Junior ain't gonna really say thank you until he become a parent and see the work that it takes for you to do what you do. Let me get on track today. So, um, the spies, let me give you some Bible here. The spies, they go, uh, they got a command from God, Minister Black, the yes. man of God, Joshua, that they would get ready to conquer some territory. It's going to make sense to you. Uh, they would get ready to receive the promise of the Lord. But in order for them to receive the promise, Deacon Wells, they had to go into the enemy's territory and trust that God was going to cover them when they couldn't see how he was going to do it. So they go to the harlot's house, harlot by the name of Rahab. That's the woman that we're talking about today in Joshua chapter 2. Uh, she had a house that was on the wall, uh, and the, the men come to her, and they say, you know, look, we, we've come to spy out the land. She says, well, let me hide y'all, because everybody in the land is afraid of you. The king is scared of you, because we've heard all the things that God has done for you in the past. And uh, we would rather, they would rather kill you, because we understand if you stay alive, then you're going to come take our land. So she says, in order for the, the will of God to be done in your life, I'll play the role of the line. Mm -hmm. Help me today. That's good, sir. Uh, I'll be the covering for you. I'll keep you safe. I'll keep you away from those that want to kill you. I just got one condition. When you get this blessing that's coming, I just want you to remember. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. And then the men of God say, well, if you hide us, you do these things, we'll make an oath with you that when we come to take the land, we're going to keep you safe. She says, uh, cool, what do I need to do? They said, I want you to take this line, okay, this cord that you laid on the window, and I want, to, I want you to make sure that when we come back to possess the land, you've got this line hanging out of your window. The line, first point I want to give you is this, the line is a point or a place of distinction. It is a place of distinction. It is, in fact, a mark that is put on you so that those who are on your level will be able to see what those that you associate with cannot see. Let me say that one more time. The, the line is a mark that is put over your life for those that are on your level spiritually, the seeing with you eye to eye, can identify who you are by your mark when those that are walking amongst you every day are blinded to who you really are. Let, let me help myself today. Um, when when, when, when uh, Brother Graham, Deacon Graham, goes on his job, um, those that are not spiritual, Mr. Black, yes, can't see the mark of the deacon on them. Mm -hmm. But those that are attempting to live their lives as unto God will come and be connected with him because they sense the distinction on his life that those he's seeing every day can't really yet identify. Yes. God will allow when there's territory, I want you to catch this, that he's getting ready to bring your way. He will allow there to be a noted distinction on you that he hides from those that are against you. Here it is. Uh, her house was on the wall but yet the pursuers couldn't see the mark that she had put on it. Here it is. Because they were not in a position spiritually, they weren't thinking about the things of God, Brother Stoops. Even though you weren't going on your job every day, quoting scripture and giving high five, God will allow those that are spiritual enough to catch something and say, oh, something about that man is a little different than everybody else. God says, I'll allow the line to be a distinguishing mark that people will be able to identify, which is to speak to you that I'm getting ready, check this out, to release territory over your life. I don't know if anybody's getting excited about this because what territory establishes what territory means is that God is getting ready to give you something to build upon. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Oh, God help me today. He's getting 
ready to release something in your life through this mark, through this line, that you can now build upon. See, when, when, when I say build upon, people automatically begin to think about the natural. And there are going to be some natural stuff God will allow you to build. There are some franchises God will allow you to build. All that stuff is good. But I'm talking about from a spiritual place, God is getting ready to give you territory that you're able to build upon. Pastor, what does that mean? He's getting ready to give you a circle of people that you're going to have divine influence in their lives. That when they come into having to make decisions, they used to want to talk to somebody else. But they're going to come find you because God says that's part of the territory I'm giving you. So he says, they say to her, you know, uh, just put this line out. Uh, and uh, we'll be able to identify you as a distinction. I, I begin to think, before I continue to move, I begin to think about people that look at Bethel Temple Faith Church funny. Let, let me just address the elephant in the room. Uh, I begin to think about Deacon Wells, people uh, that put us in a box because we don't yet have a physical building. Yes. I'm, I'm going to just talk to them. Uh, for, for those that it. would say, uh, you know, that's not yet a real church uh, because they're meeting in the schoolhouse, because they're not going to a building, they're not really a church, and because they can't see the mark that's on the house, help me today, uh, because they're not on the same plane, Mr. Black, they'll actually end up missing what God had intended for them to receive because they were not capable of looking beyond the outside to find out what was going on in the inside. But then there are those like unto a mother Drew that would say uh, I've been in traditional churches I've been in buildings all of my life but there was something about the anointing on the life of that young man it's something about the anointing in the building of Concord that I'm capable of seeing the mark on them even though they're not yet in the building. Yes sir. So there are those, Minister Black, that will write us off. Uh, there are those that would never join the 77 because they're not capable of seeing the mark that's on the building. But God says there's a generation I'm raising even in this area that is looking for a line. They're not looking for popularity. They're not looking for fame. They're looking to see where can I see the line of God. He says, I'm giving you as a body a distinction. That when you walk in your place of work, they don't see you as yourselves anymore. They see you as Bethelites. And that whenever you go wherever it is you go, they're thinking that they're seeing Timmy, but they're really identifying the mark of Bethel Temple Faith Church that's on your life. So God says, I'll allow there to be a distinction so that those who are spiritual will be able to identify you for who you are, but those that mean you evil will continue to overlook you and consider you to be insignificant. Help me to Jesus. They, 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 they think they didn't know uh, about Tony Black because, uh, you know, that was just a man that worked for Alan T. Uh, but yet there's a season coming that when the name Tony Tony Black is mentioned, there'll be now an identifiable mark because there's been a shift on this building. Help me, help me, dear Jesus. When there's a shift on the building, God says, I'm going to allow those that were blind to who you were to actually come back and have to repent to you for not acknowledging your gift when you had it the whole time. There's some folk that God will have to let come sit at your feet and say, this is a seed I owed you when I thought you were nothing. Help me today. But now I see the so she puts the mark out, first lady, as an act of distinction. The next thing a line is, not only is it a mark of distinction, a line is also a place of protection. I talk about not only the offensive line, but now I want to talk about the text. Uh, the Bible says that if you put this line out of the house, uh, everybody that's in your house is going to be saved. Ah, uh, okay. If you put this line outside of your house, everybody in your house is going to be saved. Now, Brother Stoops, what I love about this is uh, the spies didn't take inventory over who, how, or what about her family. They said all they've got to do is be behind your line. And anybody behind your line, I'm going to save. Nobody's catching it yet. God says he's no longer looking, help me today, Jesus, at the drunks and the whoremongers that are your family. Help me today. But as long 
is they can find themselves behind your line. Yeah. He says, I'll save all of them because of your line. But God, he's a woman now. So it don't matter. God says, he's in your line. Oh, God, help me today. And because he's in your line, God says, all they got to do is submit to the covering that you're under. Help me today. And that line is going to keep their lives safe. Pastor, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that God is getting ready to save somebody's son from jail because they're under the line that you created. God's getting ready to take somebody's daughter off the street because of the line that you created. God says, I'll do it for them even when they're against me because I see that you're for me. So the woman who wasn't even saved, Sister Stoops, the woman who was a harlot, the woman who was a prostitute, who was a street walker, y'all to catch that later. The woman whose life was jacked up since the ball night made a deal with the Holy Ghost. Help me today. She says, if I would simply recognize you to be who you are in my life, I need you to let what you are to me be to my family. I don't think we're catching it. God says, I'm giving you in this release of territory today the ability to start claiming salvation over your own household. There's some stuff and some folk in your family line that's really jacked up for real, for real. God said, I'm going to save them because they need your life. So he says that the line serves as a type of protection. The, the, the protection that is connected with a line, oh God, help me here, uh, is indicative in two portions of scripture. There's a scripture in Numbers chapter 2, you just write this down, Numbers chapter 2, verse 2, and also in Exodus chapter 15, 17, verse 15. Numbers 2 and 2, and Exodus 17 and 15, we identify the symbolics here of how God himself, Evangelist Graham, is our line. Here it is. We identify that in uh, Exodus 17, 15, the Bible calls the Lord Jehovah Nissi, who is the Lord God, our banner. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord God, our banner. Well, in Numbers 2 and 2, the scripture says that the banner of a people is known as an emblem of their tribe. Okay, the banner of a people, Sister Akasha, identifies the line of the tribe. So God says, I will be your banner, and the banner is indicative of your line, which means I now become your line. Here it is. When God becomes my line, Deacon Wells, that means that even when I don't measure up to my own standard, he looks at his standard instead of mine. I don't think we're catching it. When my life still ain't crossing T's and dotting I's, God says, I'm going to save your family because you you're connected to my line and not your own. So the line, the line, the protection, the banner comes from the presence of the Lord. These spies told the woman of God, they were trying to give her some imagery. They said, listen, we need you to understand that because you're putting this line out of your house, this is going to speak to those that are with us, that are coming to destroy this town. It's going to speak to them not to touch this house because the line has it covered. It's not only going to speak to them not to touch this house, but it's going to speak to the protection that goes on in your house because the line has has you covered. Here it is, Deacon Wells. The scripture does not really give us the amount of time that it took for the spies to come back in victory. Yes. Which means, Evangelist Graham, they, the, 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 the woman of God, which she was being translated to, received a word from the Lord that had not yet come to pass in her life. She received a word from the Lord that you're going to keep me safe and keep me protected, but I still haven't seen you show up yet. I'm trying to come preach to us today. Uh, the, the, the word has been declared over my life, God, that you're going to have me be gainfully employed, but I'm still jobless. Help me today. Uh, the word of the Lord has come to my life that you're going to allow me to have a seed, but I'm still childless. The, the word of the Lord has come on my life that you're going to bless me in abundance, but I'm still broke. How? do I reconcile, Sister Little, these promises of God when it seems like the timing of God is not matching my current situation? Well, this is where God allowed me to look, Brother Deacon Wells, at what a line really means. Help me today. I feel God right there. Um, before I go there, Grant, I I'm really a, a fan of a good movie. I I I'm a fan of a good movie. Not, not a bad movie, Markel, but, but, but a good movie. A good 
other movie to me is your pastor likes to watch, really. Sometimes I like to watch a movie that's got some good drama in it. Let me tell you why. Because what a movie with drama does, bro, Paul Knight, is it sets me up to a certain place, and then when I think I figured out where it's going, it'll shift on me. And when I was putting this message together, Deacon's Wells, I felt like I was writing a movie, and God had me setting some stuff up, bro, bro, Deacon Paul Knight, uh, just for there to be a shift. And when I began to look a little deeper into what he meant by a line, I began to look at the Hebraic extent of the word. And that word line in the Hebrew means, it's translated word to spell tikva, T-I-Q-A-V-H, uh, tikva, tikva in the Hebrew, check this out, line evangelist Graham, it means to be in a mode of expectancy. Yeah. A line means, means to be in a place of hope. Uh, it means that this is the thing I hope for. Yeah. Help me today. This is the thing that I live for. God told me to tell us today that even though a line is a point of distinction, and even though it is a place of protection, the line that he wants us to really focus on today is the line that speaks of expectation. There has to be a hope in my life that even when I don't see God moving like he said he would move, my expectation stays connected to him. The Bible says in Psalm 62 and 5, my my soul wait thou only for the Lord for my expectation is from him. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12 that hope deferred make of the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is as a tree of life. God told me to tell somebody today that when we put this line out, this line not only gives us a mark that we belong to him, it not only protects us from what the world is trying to do to us, but it reminds us of a place of expectation and hope that when I would have given up, God allowed me to look at the line again. When I would have thrown in the towel, he let me view the line one more time. And the line served as a reminder to me that there's something greater coming that I cannot yet see. I begin to look at the symbolism, Sister Coates, of what that line meant to the woman Rahab. And Rahab, and who she was, and how she was, had a life that was jacked up. But the line served as an expectation that things were going to get better in her life. I wish I was preaching to a church today. The woman Rahab who was a harlot at one time, allowed the line to serve as an expectation for what her new line would look like. And when we do the research of the line of Jesus, we find that Rahab the harlot was connected to the lineage of Christ. She said that I know my now might be messed up, but my hope tells me that what's coming behind me is going to be better than what I'm going in right now. And the woman looked and said, even though my today is jacked up, my tomorrow is going to be better. Even though my now looks messy, my tomorrow is still going to be greater. Even though my right now looks bleak, I still got hope that there's a new day coming. Minister Black, I begin to think about what color the line was that the woman of God put out. She didn't put out a blue line. She didn't put out an orange line. But she put out a scarlet line. And that scarlet color is reminiscent to the color red. And red is reminiscent to the color of blood. She began to allow her line to prophesy about what was coming. She knew that there was going to be blood that could change her life through the blood of Jesus Christ. She knew that blood was going to be able to protect her through the blood of Jesus Christ. She knew that the color red was going to symbolize something changing in her own life. So she let her line prophesy to her future. I don't know if you caught it or not. God said, I want you to let your lineage start prophesying to your future. Start looking at your children and tell them they're going to be business owners. Start looking at your children and tell them they're going to be doctors. Start looking at your children and tell them they're going to be great men and women of God. Because I'm going to let my line prophesy for me in case we miss the point I was trying to make today when I said the importance of staying in line. We now have been engrafted into the lineage of Christ. We now have been engrafted into the blood of Christ. That whatever decisions I make in my life, I'm making mindful of the lineage I'm now a part of. Even though Hinton is my name, Christ is my character. Even though Hinton may be my name, Christ is my standard. Because I realize as long as I stay behind the line, as long as I stay within the line, no matter where I go in life, the way will be paid for me. Because my line has prophesied to my future. He 
told me I would be above and not beneath. He told me I would be the lender and not the borrower. He told me I would be the head and not the tail. He told me I would be blessed in the city and in the field. I'll be blessed when I come and when I go. I'll be above. I'll be the conqueror. I'll be more than. He said greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. There's a promise over my lineage. And as long as I stay connected to my line, there's a promise that's coming my way. So when my bank account looks funny, when my change looks a little strange, when my money and my credit just can't get it, I begin to say there's a hope and a future connected to me. As long as I stay in the line, and the line is Christ. He's the Savior. He's the Redeemer. He's the Master and my friend. He's my keeper. He's my protection. He's my way out. He's my way through. He's my lily in the valley. He's my bright and morning star. He's the Lion of Judah. He is I am that I am. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Rogi. He is Jehovah Nissi. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's my line. And because he's my line, I've got a hope and I've got a future. Come on, put your hands together for you. The importance of staying in line. Thank you, Pastor Hinton, and thank you all for viewing and sharing this video. Stay tuned and in tune for the next awesome move of God.